There is an abundance of berries here in the land of the Vikings in summer and fall. First we get the raspberries, hallon, and next to them little smultron, wild strawberries that we string on long grass as children like beads on a necklace before we eat them. Later comes the blueberries, blåbär, that grows so plentiful here on our wild plot eventually joined by the less sweet lingonberries. Great to eat with elk meat, herring, pancakes, meatballs and more. I have them unsweetened with oatmeal porridge. The blueberries I mostly use in smoothies. And if one ventures out to the islands, one can collect the super healthy orange berries Havtorn, see buckthorn, from thorny bushes near the water. Also great for smoothies, food and skin care. <laughs> I nearly stepped in elk droppings. Um, a while ago a mother elk and her baby lay for hours right outside the window. Tala was being aggressive. Why did you think Tala was fighting? Did you think we were fighting? We were playing. Fruit and berry season are coming to an end now, but there are mushrooms in the forest yet. Beware of elk when in Sweden. They are large and dangerous animals, especially when they have a baby to protect. But only twice have I felt in immediate danger. Once one attacked us during an evening stroll near our home. Especially during hunting season and winter, they come into the village. Perhaps they think it is safer, easier to find food, or to get around on ploughed roads rather than in deep snow. The second time I was alone in the woods. The elk was taking off in the opposite direction as we startled each other. Then it turned and came after me. I was cornered against freezing water and could not go anywhere without risking an attack. So I stayed behind a scrawny bush that we could see each other through. And after a while of hearing me talk, the elk started to relax and nibble on spring's first few leaf buds, the reason for its persistence. As it got more immersed in eating, I could sneak away behind it. As usual, I went for some tratt cantarelle, funnel chanterelles this fall. A lovely mushroom we fry with butter, salt and black pepper to eat on toast if we want to keep it simple. I felt like cooking outdoors on a Swedish torch, a svensk fackla, a method used by Swedish soldiers during the Thirty Years' War in the 17th century, when this sparsely populated Nordic country was an unlikely European great power. The logs can be drilled at the top and in the side, or cut most of the way through, making four to eight sections. They can burn for hours and are practical, simple and compact. And the chimney effect allows for fresh wood to burn more easily. A rotten log can be scooped out and used around a tiny fire in a similar manner.
found a big batch of blue driskor, false saffron milk caps. They are orange mushrooms with green patches and they turn green when bruised. Their stem is hollow and their orange milk turn burgundy a while after being cut. In Sweden you can roam and forage in most places. Just make sure the mushrooms are safe to eat. These red fly agaric are poisonous, yet have been used in spiritual practices. But their white version is more dangerous and looks similar to several edible mushrooms. These are tracks of wild boars feeding. There were none here when I was a child. Now there are many, and though I have never seen one in the woods, they plow large areas of the ground in this forest. Another area they have thoroughly enjoyed ravishing is this beautiful nature reserve where I walk frequently. There was hardly a patch of earth near the sea not ripped apart by them this summer. Unfortunately, they are not the only ones wreaking havoc in the woods around here these days. We don't have a lot of leaf trees, we mostly have pine trees here and also a storm took a lot of the trees a couple of years ago. So I don't see this a lot anywhere else but here. Gotta remember to look up at the treetops really. And especially when it's this high trees, it's just so epic. But um, the trees around here, a lot of them have got these bugs. And if you don't take the trees down, the bug will spread to other trees and damage those as well. I just hope these will keep standing. Bark beetles became a problem during the hot summer of 2018, same summer that fires plagued Sweden. The problem worsened after the storm Alfrida brought down many trees in the first days of 2019. They have taken the trees, but this was such a beautiful place just a few weeks ago. Many of the trees that survived the storm now need to be removed all the same to prevent further spread of bark beetles. I suspect there will be more leaf trees than fir trees here eventually. As climate gets warmer, they can handle both the beetles and the winds better, and there is research towards such a development with planted trees in Sweden. Many trees together are strong, so they are actually communicating and helping each other via a network of fungus under the ground. So they can warn each other of pests and they can also send nourishments to the young ones. So if you see a really big old tree, like this one, is probably connected to a lot of other trees, although a lot of them were taken down now. More trees will come and they will get help from these big ones, the hub trees. some cleaner water to wash my feet in there. Get bitten by these little ants, they're vicious here. <laughs> Maybe 
there fishing the little fish that looked so tired in that brown water? I saw it fall. It made it all the way until I came back then it didn't want to stand anymore. I'm just going to look at the river actually real quick. Walking here reminds me of when I was sailing in the Caribbean for a few years. A few years, two years. <laughs> but yes. It feels like I'm going abroad even though it's not so far. neighbor saw a big animal that he said was too big to be a fox and he thought it might be a wolf so we have to go and bring in the sheep. We have lynx out here, though they stay well hidden. We might get a stray bear or wolf, but it is very rare. Roe deer I see every day, squirrels and rabbits nearly daily, and foxes occasionally. Sea eagles have returned since their near extinction due to toxins, and I feel like there are more birds of prey now overall, but less seabirds and waterfowls. I still see frogs on the roads, but where they are born I do not know, for I see no eggs or tadpoles in ponds and ditches in spring anymore. Still much life persists, and my love for this country only grows. The months ahead can be a challenge, cold and dark, with a dreary lack of colors other than gray and brown, leafless branches and slippery ground, but it can suddenly turn to unmatched beauty with a glistening white landscape. Ground and trees shimmering like diamonds in sunshine and moonlight. A fairy tale world silenced by falling snow.